Hi, I am Ali Camaletti, and you are listening to Snack Leadership. I will be talking about everything leadership, broken down into bite-sized pieces. You will hear what different leadership skills look like in organizations and how they can rise teams up or take them down. I help leaders build resilience and improve performance by bringing awareness to opportunity behaviors in my business, spark your mindset. I provide leadership and sales coaching, as well as team building and guest speaking. My hope is for you to feel inspiration and to create a spark in your mindset. Hi, everyone. Today, we are talking about high frequency. High frequency is the energy level we vibrate at with our thoughts and beliefs that broadcast out a signal to everything and everyone. Award-winning author J.J. DiGeronimo helps women raise their frequencies and empower their future impact through tried and tested strategies, mindfulness, and energetic practices. Formerly a leading woman in the tech industry, she now passionately strives to help women gain more seats at more tables by sharing the key findings that have helped her and countless others illuminate a path forward. Her work includes three books, two podcasts, two global online communities, and in-person experiences. I had the pleasure of listening to JJ's book, Seeking, and knew I had to interview her. It resonated so much for me with my personal journey, and I'm so excited to have you get to listen to her today. JJ, thank you so much. Mm, I'm so honored to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Absolutely. Okay. So I always like to start off with what is something that you have recently learned about yourself? Mm, I think that your inside pulls forward your outside. And what I mean by that is I always thought work was outside of me or in my head. But what I've realized is the work that I've done working through my stories, the deep work I've done with who I am and why I'm here has allowed me to really shift how I feel on the inside, which has ultimately changed what's happening on the outside. I love it. Yes, in so many ways. And I think that that can be a struggle for people, right? They separate the two so much. They do. And in regards to leadership, it's funny because a lot of leaders, and I've done this myself and have seen this firsthand, is that they, they – internalize what's happening around them or what's happening in their group as sort of their own energy. When in reality, as a leader, they can really kind of shift or anchor or redirect the energy by what's happening inside themselves and through their own self-work. Yes, absolutely. So true. And I'm so excited for people to hear your thoughts on this. So when did you first embody this leadership skill of high frequency? Just recently, I'm over 50 now, and I've done a lot of work in the tech space, as you mentioned. I've been a leader for decades, and I would say that it wasn't until I sort of had my own awakening where things, you know, kind of started with a tower card and the tarot where everything kind of just falls apart around you. And I know a lot of people have been having this happen to them recently. That was kind of the time where I started to figure out, like, I need to figure out who I am. I need to understand what's making me really drive because the things that I was driving for, the salary, the title, the board seat, they all came to fruition. And I didn't really get the joy or fulfillment I thought I was going to receive when I got to those specific sort of professional goals that I had. And so the work I've had to do on the inside has really taken me years to do, and it's allowed me to shift how I move through the world and how I lead. And as you say that word joy, what came up for me and kind of the catalyst in my own personal work was when I was listening to Brene Brown and she said, when you numb the pain, you numb the joy. And I was like, oh no, I want to feel joy. And I want to feel it a lot in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. And so I've got to figure out how to work through that pain so that I can start feeling the joy. Yeah. And it's not like, I mean, some people might be like, oh, what do you mean by pain? Or I don't want to deal with what happened in second grade or no, I'm not going there. But it can start simple. It can just paying attention to how you lead. What are your triggers? 
What do people on your team do that drive you crazy? When do you feel most vulnerable? When do you feel most alone? Like just investigating your emotions tied to your role, the work you're doing, and how you feel as a leader at different times in your day, week, or quarter can really give you insight to the work you do need to do. Yeah. So as we go into when you have witnessed other leaders and they are really embracing this high frequency leadership skill, what does that look like? Empowerment. People that can empower others to do good work really starts with the leader, how the leader feels about themselves, how much confidence they have, the belief they have in their team, the ability to find ways to get people on their team to sort of tap into their inner knowing, into their natural gifts, into their wisdom, rather than, you know, times when people try to beat it out of them. Yes. Or pressure. And you're leading us right into like when you've watched leaders that struggle with that high frequency and you can just see that it's not there and feel it. What happens? Yeah. I mean, you've, we've all had those leaders, right? Where the pressure calls, the innuendos, the fear-based leadership. And, you know, now many of us know it's because that person often feels insecure or feels inadequate or feels like the other shoe is going to drop, maybe imposter syndrome. I think when people try to lead with fear or last minute leadership, or you owe this to me leadership, it's really evident that that leader has some work to do. And there's a lot of leaders out there. I mean, there's a lot of leaders that have been promoted immaturely, have been promoted before they're ready, that often don't really know that leadership is more about empowering others than it is about lifting yourself up. The benefit of empowering others is eventually your whole team rises to the occasion and sometimes beyond, but poor leadership can really result in uh, people leaving the team, you know, bad projects coming your way, you know, and there's a lot of things like energy attracts energy, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yes. Yeah. And because I think that that's one of the things I see the most is the fear-based leadership. Can you just talk to us a little bit more about that? Like how would somebody recognize if they're listening to this and they're like, oh, whoa, I might be operating at at a fear base? Hmm. Yeah. So when you think about fear-based leadership, if this, then this, if not, then this, you know, it's really sort of in your face, you've got to get this done, or this is going to happen. If we don't finish this, this will happen. It's just very, very draining. Like when I think about it and listen, we've all been there and we all have to evolve as leaders. And many of us start in that space, unfortunately, because there's not a lot of great leadership training that really talks about the emotions and the stories and the things that are in the inside that are often triggering the energy results and conversation you're having on the outside. So if you are somebody who, you know, you're kind of leading with fear, you're leading with a big stick, you're leading out of like pressure cooker. uh, One, I think you just need to think about like, when in your time did you, when in your life did you pick that up as a leadership skill? Because oftentimes it's when you were growing up, a teacher, a family member, somebody, maybe your first owner or first job or first boss, You know, I find that people don't get up to go to work every day to do a crappy job. So if you are leading a team that you think people aren't doing their job, if you do some work on yourself, like really start working on the inside. And this has come so far for leaders where they can now do like that emotional training and insight and even start reading some Brene Brown, Rising Strong is one of my favorite books. It really gives you some insight to the stories you have in your head and how those play out in your work. Yeah. Um, I think that we are raised with old leadership styles that worked a long time ago. And just like in anything we do, it's a cycle and we carry those through. And it isn't until we see this isn't working anymore. This doesn't work anymore because we have new generations and new type of humans out there that want to really work in different energy. And so 
I love that you're speaking to that. Thank you. Mm. Uh, what about a mentor that has really helped you along your path with this? I've had a lot of people come up my path. And funny enough, you know, I've had the traditional coaches, I've had the traditional leadership training, even the leadership assessments. But I think the people that have helped me most, you know, Brandon Brown is definitely somebody. So she, her Rising Strong book, I paired with Mindfulness Training by John Kabat-Zinn. And those two I did together. And those, that training has helped me really understand that there it can be space between my thoughts. I was running at life so hard. I was in high tech in Silicon Valley, and I was just tasked with always getting it done. I pride myself on that, and I led like that. And it wasn't until I took mindfulness training, which at first I thought was absolutely bogus. I'll just be quite honest. Um, it, there was an eight-week class. It took me four weeks to really get into it because I just – didn't understand the concept of just watching your thoughts or paying attention or just letting your thoughts fly, fly by and not writing them down or not doing things with them because that's how I had been trained for so long. Yep. So it took me four year, four of the eight weeks to really understand what mindfulness is. And I will share with you that it has been the most powerful tool I have had put in my toolkit in a long time. And the reason it's so powerful is it gives you the ability to stand back and just watch your thoughts. Just watch your thoughts. And it also gives you the ability to be in the present moment so that you can just see what's happening around you. If you notice, a lot of really effective leaders are very good observers. Well, and I like to go to that place of curiosity after watching it. I'm like, huh, I wonder where that came from. And then digging into it. So <clears throat> with a mentor, was there a specific one or it was a combination? Oh my gosh, there's a combination. In fact, I've created a whole podcast on all the energy <laughs> practitioners I've worked with because every one of them taught me something about myself. And I feel like I got to a point in my career where I was just going through the motions. I was doing the work. I had great results, but I was disconnected. In a way, I couldn't really articulate back then, but I was essentially living outside my body. I was so driven and such a go-getter that I forgot that I am connected to something bigger, that this is just an experience, and that I really am here to learn lessons. And so when I met with several energy practitioners from Reiki to tapping to mindfulness to you know a whole slew of them I talk about, they gave me the they allowed me to remember that I have a lot more gifts I haven't even tapped into yet. And I should have a lot more compassion for myself, for where I've been and where I'm going, and that I can really be a light for others. And I think that was the beginning of raising my frequency, really allowing my energy to align with a higher level. So frequency like FM radio, frequency modulation, frequency. I was probably maybe at an 82.7 energy. Now I really work to be at a 97.5. And like how much my vantage point or viewpoint has changed by me just working on raising that frequency every day. So what do you do daily yeah. as you get ready and you want to build that frequency up for your day? What are some tools that you use? Great question. So I used to start by opening my phone and looking at my email. It was the very first thing I did every single day. Uh, but now I turn on a meditation on YouTube and I talk about being that talks about being a light, being energy, paving a path, you know, creating a path for others to pave their way. So I listen to meditations from Steve Noble and then I try to get outside. You know, even if it's for five minutes, I just try to get outside, plant my feet down, just really remember that I'm part of something so much bigger. Because when I was so intense and probably not as great of a leader as I could be now, I was so internalizing as everything was like from my focal point. And in reality, getting outside, you realize you are just like a little dot on a much bigger canvas. And so that helps really just kind of start my day to realize that I am part of a bigger equation. And if I can contribute in a positive way with light and love rather than fear and anxiety, I am going to help the engine. 
And that's kind of how I get started is I really think about where I'm starting. And then I think about how I talk to myself, how I talk about others, what I pay attention to. Like, am I going to get caught up in the office gossip? No, I'm not. Not anymore. You know, I'm going to pay attention to things that are enriching. And I think I'm really mindful of what energy I take in and what energy I give out. (laughs) So good. So good. Okay. We could talk about this for a long time. I have a lot of things I want to share, but at another time. Can you share with us, though, the podcast where you talk about the mentors? What was the name of your podcast that you did that on? Oh, my podcast is Together We Seek. Love it. Okay, perfect. So uh, what about a quote that you feel really connects to high frequency? So it's interesting when you're in corporate America, you know, you're so driven by the number, regardless of what role you're in, you're always driven by the number. And if you remember, you know, if you're not in it anymore, you know, maybe you're an entrepreneur, it's like quarterly oftentimes, and it's like, we got to get to the number. And it's just so outreaching from where you are. You're always reaching out to get to that thing over there. And so when I became an entrepreneur, it was hard because I always wanted to replace my salary and I was just so mas- so much masculine energy. And all of us have feminine and masculine energy, but be- being in high tech for so long, I was so driven, goal-oriented, like got to get it done, got to get there. And the work I've done now is trying to really balance that feminine and masculine energy so I can use more of my intuition, my inner wisdom, and the masculine energy so that I can cultivate activities that allow me to really kind of go at it a more holistic approach, which creates more joy. And so the quote that I read every day on my wall is, get rich from the energy you create. Mm, yeah, it's really good. Get so rich true. from the yes, get rich from the energy you create. And I feel like it has allowed me to shift my focus instead of like tick, 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 everything like, oh, you know, it allows me the space to be creative, but also influential in a way that I didn't empower myself before. Yeah. Cause rich is perspective for everyone. Doesn't always mean dollars. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So I like to close with what's your favorite snack? I thought about this for a minute because I listened to your other episodes and, you know, I want to say pears and I want to say something healthy, 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 but it's chocolate. (laughs) So milk chocolate, dark chocolate. I do eat dark chocolate more and I try to get chocolate from all different places. You know, I try to try different chocolates, but I am If I'm really being um, just fun and laughter, I'd go for milk chocolate, but I'm trying to be conservative and eat healthy, I'll go for the dark chocolate. But chocolate (laughs) is my favorite snack. Uh, So good, JJ. So much great information. And I encourage everyone to really, I listened to the book, but Seeking was amazing for me. And anything else you want everyone to know? Well, I think something that I learned, and some of you may have heard this before, but it's really funny because I just always felt like things were happening to me. Like, oh, I can't believe that happened. I missed that flight or I couldn't get that project. That project didn't come my way. And now with the energy shift, I really have shifted my mindset to this is happening for me instead of this is happening to me. And I know you've talked about this before, but I feel like this is happening for me doesn't make me a victim in my own life. And it gives me the ability to be curious, as you mentioned, to really say like, why is this happening? What am I supposed to learn? Who am I supposed to meet? And I become more engaged in how life presents itself. That gives me honestly more joy and and realization that things are happening for me if I just pay attention. And that's why that mindfulness piece has been such a critical tool for me to make this shift. I couldn't agree more. I don't believe there are any mistakes in anything. And if that is even a flight delay, that's an opportunity. There's a reason. Mm. Yeah. So I feel like you really can get into a more mindful leadership style that starts with you. That starts with you. And it really is such it can be it can be tough at first to get started to start diving into stories and things that you say, but I think start with Brene Brown's book, you know, Rising Strong. You can pop over to my book, Seeking. 
I think both of the both of them provide a transformation uh, of your thoughts, and I think everything starts with your thoughts if you if you're aware of it. And it, I think it's if it's time for you to kind of dive into that, it's a great time of year to do it. Thank you, JJ. I appreciate you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for tuning in to Snack Leadership. I hope you felt inspiration, motivation, and felt your mindset spark. Snack Leadership is recorded and produced by myself, Ali Camaletti, and music by Shireen Amini. Mm-hmm.